rise and shine, mothers and brothers and cheese wedges and handlebars all over the world. Rise and shine. Let it grow and let it flow. Riding to work today, hat of the day. The ride to work is brought to you by the country gentleman. Straw hat. This is old faithful, man. This thing has seen more thunderstorms. It's all stained. You don't wash these hats. You know what you do? You, you put a little bit of lemon juice on them or a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and leave them in the sun and stains will leave. They get bright again because you can't wash these things. It's kind of getting a little bit ravelly, but you know, I kind of like that. It's got character. It's called the Country Gentleman Straw Fedora. The brim is just wide enough. It's not like the Cuban Fedora, which is a very short brim, but this is just enough to really shield my face and I love it. And I think it's gonna rain today, so that's why I brought it with me. Anyways, fantastic eye-opening aha experience this morning. As you know, I rescue cats. I can relate, relate almost everything to business and personal growth and monetization. I have two baby cats. They're just little tiny things. I rescued them, they're 12 weeks old. You've seen them in some videos. They're feral, which means they're wild. They were born and spent their first 10 weeks outside, and that's a wildness you can't get out of them. They like to hide, they like to cower, they like to crouch. They're not lap cats. They do not fit the paradigm of nice, snuggly cats that come and sit on your lap and purr and fall asleep and sleep alongside of you on your pillow and all that. Feral cats are not like that. They're like beards. They come, it, sometimes it takes, it's not weeks, it's not months, sometimes it takes years for them to come around to the point where there's little snuggle bugs. But they always got that wildness about them. And that's one of the things that I love is that wildness and it takes patience and it has actually done wonders for my patience. I have a sewing, like a, it's a hundred year old sewing machine in the house. It's a cabinet. It looks like a piece of furniture you've seen where you open up a cabinet and the sewing machine, the actual machine itself flips up and then there's a little foot pedal kind of thing. Well, the, this one cat, Joey, the little tiger baby, they call, the vet called him a brown mackerel stripe. Love it, beautiful little, handsome little fella. He goes up into that sewing machine in the cabinet when I'm looking for him. Joey, where are you? Good morning, Joey. And if I can't find him anywhere, I open up the door to that sewing machine cabinet and he's hiding up there. Because he's scared? No, he's, he doesn't run when I grab him. He just like goes up there because that's how wild animals are. They crouch, they just stay in little dark places and they just come out to eat and you know, they're not, they're not your typical house cat. If you've never had feral cats, um, it, it's such an interesting, interesting. I'm, I've had animals on and off throughout my whole life and this is such an interesting case study. So rather than always, when I can't find them, I have a, uh, I have a routine that I do. I, ha I know like his hiding places. I know where he retreats to. And one of those places is the sewing machine cabinet. I went there, there he was. So what I did now, I kept the door of the cabinet open. Kept the door to the sewing machine cabinet open. Why? I exposed his hiding place. He's no longer allowed to hide there. Now, are you seeing the relationship of that to personal growth and business and development and earning. 
when you expose, when you identify and expose your hiding places, it's like you've seen in the movies, no place to run, no place to hide. There's been a million great rock and roll songs written about no place to run, no place to hide. Good guy chasing the bad guy. You're out of places to hide. I got you now. Listen, if you can, and it's a hard thing, identify the places where you hide. Open them up. Shine the light brightly on them so you can no longer retreat to them. There are ruts that we get into. Remember, we talked about ruts that can last up to 10 years. Identify the places that you run to, the little quote-unquote safe spots. Eliminate them. Eliminate the safe spots. Where do you run when you encounter adversity or objection or hard times? Now, I'm not talking about if you want to recharge your batteries, you go to the beach for a few days and watch the sunrises, which is what I do. I'm more of a sunrise guy than a sunset guy. I love getting up early rather than staying up late. Identify the places, not the places that recharge your bed. There's like, if you want to go hide out at the beach, or to your cabin, or to your mountain house to recharge your bed, that's not hiding. That's, and that's not retreat. That's a respite. That is, it recharges your batteries. You feel energetic, mentally and physically, when you come back from those little escapes, respites. That's a healthy thing. I'm talking about the unhealthy retreats. Where do you go when you encounter objection, adversity, and things you don't like? Is it video games? Do you sit in front of the TV obsessively? Do you figuratively close the door to your room and hide like the cats do? Do you crouch and cower down? If you eliminate the places the hiding places, open them up, expose them to light, guess what? Neurologically, you're training yourself to face adversity head on, dealing with it and not procrastinating. Believe me, I know people who's, who've got hiding places in their hiding places in their hiding places. It's time to get rid of them. Some of the best way to do that is to ask some people that are closest to you. This is key. Ask them, where do you see me running to when I encounter adversity? Is it a bottle of vodka? Is it smoking? Is it vaping? Is it popping pills? Is it sleeping? Is it a video game? Is it eating a half gallon of ice cream and a bag of potato chips? Where do you run when you encounter things? I encourage you, expose those things. Get them out. Put light in them. Make them so unbearable. Make them so they're no longer comfortable places that you can hide. I was an eater. God, I'm talking a half gallon of ice cream. Gone. One sitting. A movie? And, and when I said a half gallon of ice cream and a bag of potato chips or a can of Pringles, I meant that. That was my typical stress comfort food. Salt and sugar were just always... I would, I would literally eat an entire bag of potato chips. I love the kettle cooked potato chips. I love a can of Pringles. Just... Once I open up a can of Pringles, they're gone. There's no such thing as like having like a little stack. I eat them till they're done. Ice cream, I don't even bother putting it in the bowl. I would, I would put like three scoops in the bowl thinking like I'm being good. And then when I get done with that bowl, I'd go back to the freezer and take the entire half gallon, just bring it out with me. I'd have like a little napkin or a little towel on my lap and I would just finish off a half gallon of butter pecan or mint chocolate chip. Rough. I eliminated that stuff. I stopped hiding in food. I'm not much of a, a sleep escaper guy. I don't, I sleep to recharge my batteries. Some people sleep to escape. 
movies. I love films. Uh, TV. Hours can go by. I eliminated that out of my life. I watch what I want to watch. A film. Anything on demand on Netflix. Turn the TV on. Watch it. Turn it off when it's done. I don't sit for six hours in front of the TV. As far as the web is concerned, I'm very functional. I stay in touch with my network. I stay in touch with my family in America, in Europe, seeing what everyone's doing. It's nice. It's brought us very close. I can see detail. I can see what my cousins in Italy had for breakfast this morning. So in that way, it's, it's been a good thing for me. Where do you escape? Is it relation? Is it going and picking up somebody in a bar? Is it having a different person in your bed every night or a couple nights a week or once a week? You know. Ask the people that are closest to you to be honest with you. Help. Ask them to help you identify the places that you run to. And it takes a lot of honesty. You have to be honest with yourself to grow. I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50. I have no plans of retiring. I love being productive. I love moving. I love growth. This morning, 201 pounds. I love it. I'm getting down to 185 to 190. It's going to be a great weight. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be getting off medication that I've been on for about a month and a half. I can't wait for that to happen. My, my nutritional state is improving every single day. I'm relearning how to eat. At my age, I've, I've had to relearn how to eat. No more pizza. I make whole wheat pizza now with fresh tomatoes and a little bit of Parmesan. I don't I don't order Papa John's as much as I love Papa John's coming to the house in 30 or 45 minutes and eating half a pizza. I can't do that anymore. Can't do it. Alcohol, I'd rather have one quality beer. One sipping shot of top shelf tequila or bourbon than sit there and just drink all night. Can't do it. Can't do it. I like quality. I'd rather have one good cigar than a cheap ass, nasty smelling cigar. I'd rather have a few good friends than a whole bunch of so-so friends. So think about that. This could possibly be one of the things that helps catapult you to the next level in your life. And I hope it does. You're awesome. I believe in you. And like I say, I might be the only person in the entire world saying that I believe you. I believe in you. I tell my children this. I text my kids. I love you and I believe in you. And I text them that. Thanks, Dad. I love you too. And that's kind of a neat thing. Go for it, man. George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver, on my way to work. It's my pleasure to have you join me on my ride to work in the mornings. Thanks a lot. Go kill it today, man. Have a good one. Bye.